right. So, um, I really, I really don't have a way of starting these off. I, you know, we can obviously trim the beginning if, if we need to, but it's my fine. idea was I wanted to just do this and have a conversation and come up with the name afterwards. So whatever we wind up like talking about, um, that can just be, the title can come later. You know, we just have our conversation because the first time me and you talked, it was like a three hour session of all kinds of sauce that the people need to hear. So I'm like, boom, right. who's the second right. podcast guest? It's got to be Sky. Oh, man, I'm honored, dude. I guess this is like our like your first uh, pilot episode, if anything. So honored to be the pilot. <laughs> Colton was the uh, the first. We did his last week. But, um, okay. Okay. but you are you are the second guy on it. I thought of you immediately because I remember when like we literally just hit it off when we first talked. Um, and obviously, like since then, um, now we're friends and um, both in Chicago. And man, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I really I really don't know. Like, I don't know how to start these. Like, it's like, oh, I don't want to just be like, well, tell the audience about yourself. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you got to start somewhere, you know, nothing's perfect. But I think, uh, yeah, you'll know, I feel like watching other podcasts, people just talk and I think it's just a conversation Introduction can be a little, you know, daunting sometimes, but I think you'll figure it out. It's kind of like this, we just talk. And like you said, there's hours of information that we you and I were discussing about that I feel like it would definitely benefit to the public. And uh, it's just information that would have been very useful uh, well, for me, when, when I started from the very beginning, so it's like, uh, yeah, man, I'd be happy to share any knowledge, any tips, advice, or anything like that. Right, and I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's my entire basis for wanting to start a podcast, and especially do it this way, um, is just there's no barriers to entry. Uh, you know, clearly we're in two different states right now. Uh, I know you and me and Carlos wanted to start a podcast, and I mean, I feel like it kind of just... Um, I, I think we just got too busy. So I think this is the way to do it if we really just want to get this thing done. And uh, here we are. And I think, you know, barring that the quality is not great, but what does that really add? You know, at the end of the day, it's about the uh, things being said. And, you know, if I was if I was me four years ago, it's like you said, I'd like to hear this stuff, regardless of if it's got, you know, a switcher with different camera angles, good lighting and all that. Oh, yeah, man. Dude, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah, we, we all get busy, it happens, um, which is not a bad thing. We're all doing something, making sure we're trying to, like, uh, take off in our careers and in our lives. Uh, but, dude, I'm seeing everyone doing really well, dude, just looking at you. You're, like, crushing it, dude. It's not, what, it's been not even a year, and you're making a lot of noise, a lot of noise. Thanks, man. Not only in Chicago, but the entire United States, man. People know who you are, you know? So it's like... Uh, I don't know about I'm that. I'm happy to see fellow Chicago... Well, you're from Ohio, but fellow Chicagoans just, like, just making a name for themselves, you know? So... Yeah, so, man. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. I appreciate that so much. And, yeah, the last four to six months has been absolutely explosive. I couldn't thank everybody enough for, like, you know, giving me work and wanting to work with me. And, um, I mean... The thing, the biggest thing that I always tell people is you want to find a community. This, these are the people you want to network with, you know, and, and um, you know, having yourself as kind of an introductory friend, uh, you know, and a fellow creative in Chicago to kind of like welcome me into the whole space, I think was super key because, um, you know, obviously we're, we're in that big group text. Um, shout out Chris and everyone else in there. But um, yeah. this this wasn't Cleveland like this wasn't Cleveland didn't have anything like that. And I think that, you know, you can try to go to networking events. But at the end of the day, I think who you want to try to get to know is other creatives because that's where you're, you're going to get the most help. Yeah, but it's like a, a night and day difference for you. And uh, yeah, I, I had a similar experience with you, uh, just like yourself, like even in Chicago, living in Chicago, it can be challenging to find that network. But it really all it took for me, that one friend, and that same friend is Chris. He, uh, you know, we got we got a shout out to Chris again, you know. Chris is on. Chris is coming on the podcast, too. Yeah. So Chris is the one that pretty much initially introduced me to a lot of people, like a lot of faces and got to know who they are, their names. Because for me, I was like, nobody knew who I was. You know, I was just, I was like, you know, had like maybe a thousand followers and 
How long ago was that then? Dude, it wasn't that long ago. I would say it was about, well, it's 2024 now. So I would say like early on of like 2021, like the the last quarter of it is when I first start to meet people. Sure. So it wasn't that long ago, but again, it just took one friend and it introduced me to a lot of people. And you work with them. You work with Bri. Uh, He was another friend that we got to like meet. And then, uh, dude, we're all like good friends today. Everyone's taking off. And yeah, see how that one friend can just change the dynamics of like who you can network with later on you know a hundred percent and um yeah literally one connection can like make all the difference um i talked to Briar earlier today actually he's he's crushing it um i yeah. saw obviously the thing that gracie just put out is amazing um oh, that's so sick so oh, so sick so proud for that. yeah what did uh you helped with that then right no, I was supposed to. I just provide some gear. Uh, oh, cool. And then I think the other Ben, Ben Glunt, yes. stepped up and to be the key grip. So I'm like, dude, that's great. Ben's got it as well. Yeah. You know? So that's the beauty about the community. Like, uh, if you need help, there are people out there that are, like, willing to, like, put their time just to help you out because I feel like that's, like, the type of, like, relationship we have but but most importantly the the respect you know people respect each other and yeah they want everyone to like do well which is kind of uncommon um because like for, you know i don't know if you knew but like back then maybe like 2021 and before it, it was quite it was really competitive like, so this is what you've told me before like when we first yeah, met i was like true. wow we've we've only i've only met good people like we're out shooting and we run into carlos on bikes um and I, you know, oh, yeah, it was cool too, yeah. sat and talked with him for like an hour. Just, you know, we didn't even expect to run into him. Uh, and, you know, he already knew who I was. I knew who he was just through Instagram. And you and then I remember yeah. saying to you, it, it, these are, this is great. Everybody here is amazing. And you're like, it wasn't always it, it, like that. It's beautiful how it is now, but it was not like that before. So and, talk about how it was um, before. Tell me more about that. Uh, before, honestly, it, it's, you know, if, you, if you're going to play the numbers game, if you didn't have much following, even if your work is pretty damn good, uh, no one's going to really, like, take you seriously, you know. Oh, this guy only has a 1,000. He doesn't have, like, 10,000 followers like I do, you know. Like, I'm over this guy, you know. And But but there's, like, a thing where even the little guy, you be, he could become a threat, you know. Like, it's like they're – I feel mm. people are always scared. And there's – Scarcity. A lot of geek, scarcity, gatekeeping – um, and but I feel like the sad thing is like people don't see the bigger picture, but going in, but going in their perspective, uh, I get it. Like uh, you worked hard to get this type of client or this type of line of work, you know, and sharing that type of like network might harm you. That's the kind of the scarcity, the the anti abundance mindset you could be having that can steer you away from uh, thinking about the community, you know. And but I feel like now it's so much has changed. You, like people are understanding and realizing supporting the community is is such is such an important thing to do. Yeah. You don't have to you don't have to like dedicate your entire life for it, but just like not at all. A little giving back, you know. Uh it, it really is very valuable to everybody. It's a it's a thing where you put in and I feel like everybody gets to eat, everybody gets to win, you know, kind of mindset. So that's that's the approach that I like. I, I, I love it when if something is doing well for me, but everyone else is benefiting from it too, that's a beautiful thing. So uh, I feel that's what excites me to like, you know, support the community or do something for it. And I feel like a lot of people like want to get on that train as well. So I think it's yeah. cool that you, you like, I mean, when I think of somebody who does that, I definitely think of you. Like you're always the guy in the group text that's like answering questions and, you know, offering gear or I remember, especially, you know, last year there was, I feel like you were just offering jobs in there left and right. Um, and I, I just, yeah, I think it's just, you don't see, you don't see that much of it to the extent I feel like that you do that. So I think it's, it's really cool. And it's, it's definitely, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. It, it, for me, it didn't feel like it was that much more work or anything. Cause like, again, like, if I don't take this job, it's going to be thrown away or someone else is going to grab it. But hey, I know like in the group, there are people that got to pay rent. They want to get that new lens or new camera gear or like surprise their mom with something uh, for a gift. And then I'm like, you know what? Hey, dude, I'm not going to take this. Why don't you have this, you know? Right. So, um, yeah. It's well, I think a lot of people there. have the mindset of, of you know, give me a finder's fee. You know, hey, I'm, I'm trying to run a, 
uh, production company, you know, this is my lead. You know, if, if I'm going to give it to you, then I'm going to only give you a percentage and I'm going to sell it under my business. And I think that is smart from a business perspective, but we're not talking about giant clients like that. You know, it's like if, if this was a, if we were playing a bigger ball game, you know, and we're not talking about thousand dollar gigs, we're talking about $10,000 gigs, then right. I'd say, take it, take your fair share. Like, don't just sauce somebody yeah. that giant contract like that. And uh, oh, I, I love this part because like, uh, yeah, someone was telling me, Sky, you should take some percentages off of this. And I'm like, do I? Should I? Like, you should. It was your connect. They're pretty much working off of your reputation. And when that percent is so 50 much. bucks, it's like, just take it. <laughs> it's not, it you know what's crazy? What I, I, I've been getting a lot of like hate because like uh, there's some of these agencies and I know these, these freaking agencies, they don't give you much to the creator They're, they always cheat them out and they always put them in so much work and i'm like dude this is what the client's gonna pay me uh, how much you want for it, you know right. uh, you want to take like majority of it or 50 of it you know we we, we discuss about it you know i like to be transparent about it so, yeah if you're gonna do a lot of work you deserve majority of that pie so it's like, that's the way i roll and yeah and it's and a lot of times is like i try to match uh, whoever the third party or whoever I'm outsourcing it to, I try to like match it. And that's the fun part for me. Like I can care less if the client, you know, like wants to go with it or not. But for me, I'm my, like my priority is to make sure like, Hey, can you match this price? Cause for, in my head, I want to match, uh, you know, for, for you example, I want to make sure you get what you want, you know? Yeah. So that's the fun part sometimes for me. And whenever I get it, I'm like, yes, we're all going to win here. You know, it's like, it's a, it's a cool feeling. I think uh, definitely. And I, I think if you, you know, communicate that to, say, a production company or um, whoever is technically hiring you and you say, yeah, look, you know, I, it, it would be better if we have two people on this instead of one, then, you know, they'll, can, they'll, they'll factor that in to you asking them for a larger price. Um, exactly. Yeah. And just like and also um, an advice for a lot of creators out there. Let's say you want to get a certain client and going off of what we're saying here is like you could always get your friend involved and your friend might have like the dopest like motion graphics or drone clips. Bring him along, you know, share, get, uh, get to share his portfolio to the client. Right. And, and like, you know, up the production value. So that's the nice thing, you know, you because, you know, you can't do it all. You know, it's, it's like uh, if you can't do it all, what do you do? You got to get someone who is a subject matter expert in that. Right. And then um, yeah, this is this is a part. this is such a great idea. I want to I want to talk about this more cuz I mean, we live yeah. in such a I mean, this is a deeper conversation, but we live in such an individualized culture and I mean, there's so many implications of that and I think one of them is that people just sort of feel um like afraid to just talk to people, afraid just not afraid just like it's just like it's not the norm and, you know, it's not just that they're trying to be selfish and it's also not that, um, yeah, it, it's not that, for example, if I want to take on a client uh, by myself and I want to do the entire thing myself, it's it's really not a selfish thing. It's more so just a, like, I didn't even think to bring someone else on. And, like, you could that say, happens, yeah. and you could say, wait a minute, I have this connection but, you know, if you're, for example, somebody who's just starting out or, you know, for example, if you're me where I, I usually don't fly drones, I could say, hey, Sky, you know, I've got this um, architecture client or I got this construction client. They're definitely going to need some drone stuff rather than, you know, me just not even try to do the job then or, you know, just me trying to do it worse. Why not just hit, like hit you up and then both do it just like you said. So. Yeah, and uh, I think people don't even so, think to do that. I would say, yeah, I mean, part of it's like, uh, you know, I don't blame if, if that's how you are, I don't blame you because you know, a lot of people in this industry can be introverts and it's like the right. level of confidence to approach people. This and is why the community is so important because once you separate, once you tear down those walls, you know, even if you're introverted, you know, you make some friends now, those are your but those are your buddies, and you know, you can have those people to rely on. Yeah, it's a separate skill to work on as well. That's just kind of how it is as a, not just as a creator, but as a person, you know, as a person, you can be very introverted, but as long as you have the ability to talk from people, 
uh, engage in a good conversation, connecting with them, it can take you, it can take you quite far, you know, but it's a, it's, it is a skill. It's, it's another skill on top of it. Yeah. And most definitely. Yeah. It, the interpersonal skill, it, it definitely goes a long way. It's just, uh, it's the truth. Like a lot of times people want to work with you because you're very likable. You know, sometimes you're not, you might not be the best creator in the room, but you're very likable. Yeah. To work with you. It, it just, that's how it is. It, and a lot sure. of people, oh, that's, that's BS. It's bullshit. I'm like way better than this guy. Uh, to me, it's like you can't always look at it that way. Sometimes, like, the guy, again, who is really respectable, you know, likable, you know, it, it, it's hard to beat, man. If the people want them, that's just kind of how it is. That's just how – it's just a – I guess it's a little political, right? But it's no, a game you got to play. I think this is the the human game, though. Like, this is this goes beyond just our industry. I think this is – this is what networking is in essence. So, you know, I have, I have a couple of intern guys. Uh, I'm sure I've, I've told you about intern, yeah. interns for lack of a better name. But, um, you know, I, I mentor them and, uh, you know, teach them creative stuff and videos and photos and everything, really. So, um, and I learn stuff from them, too. They're, they're great. You know, they're more so, you know, partners at, at this point, junior, <laughs> junior partners. I don't know what to call them, but interns. So, anyway, um, the thing I always tell them, you know, about networking is, even if you go to a networking event, uh, don't ever feel the need to be corporate. And I think this is the opposite of what they teach you in school. In school, they teach you, hey, straighten that tie, firm up that handshake, polish up that resume, make sure you got your elevator pitch. It's like these are these are um, fake. I don't want to say fake. Like those things aren't not important, but like – those are just, you're just checking the boxes. Like you're just going through the motions. The real thing that's important is exactly what you said is, can you be a likable person? Like, can you straight up, can you just be friends with somebody? That's literally, I think more important than knowing how to like talk to talk or walk to walk. Like, so, so what I tell them is, yeah, like show up to a networking event. They're like, what should I wear? I'm like, dude, like wear literally whatever you're comfortable in. If you're the dude with the hoodie, you want. <laughs> if you're the dude with the hoodie, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing fucking wrong with that at all. And you you can go in and you can, you know, all of a sudden you're the least corporate guy in the room. You're a breath of fresh air in that room. And exactly. and then that guy who's talking to 10 different corporate people remembers you because you were the guy that just, hey, you just had a normal conversation. You didn't even bring up your business. And boom, the last thing you tell them is about your work and uh, assuming you got the portfolio. Yeah, exactly. Now you got both. Now you got both daggers. Um, exactly. It's a kind of, it's kind of like a, it's like a humble approach, you know, yeah. like a lot of times uh, when you approach a person, uh, people, those people forget. It's like, uh, yeah, you gotta, you want to like get the elevator speech ready. Right. But I think what's more important is like, get to know the person, you know, yeah. Kinda like, you know, ask like about them, what, what they do, like spark an interest and have that undivided attention, you know, which is a great, uh, I, I got this from another podcast. Ben was talking to uh, Jacob Ferro Films, amazing creator. Yeah, Ferro Films is wild. Like, giving undivided attention to someone is sometimes is like one of the best gifts you can give to yeah. a person. And that's great. Sometimes some people just need something just to listen to be heard, you know, and then uh, get to know them. And yeah, and then later on talk about hey, oh, this is what I do. You know, they'll they'll pop a question. A lot of times uh, right. they'll ask you, so what do you do for a living? So what do you do? You know, right. Oh, you know, and it's like you're almost you can't. You can't like be be just waiting for it. You know, you have to really. It's like okay, it's not about me for ten minutes. Just it's only about this person, and then yeah. they'll eventually. Assuming they're not, you know, some people are. You know, you'll meet some people, and then you know, after about ten minutes, you're like, this guy is all about himself. Like this guy's yeah. really. And I almost feel bad for those people because they are the ones who don't understand what we're talking about right now. And it takes practice. Uh, Most certainly. Most certainly. And for me, I was not always like this. Again, I was always the guy that has the elevator speech ready and that's what I come up with. You know? I can't even imagine and, you being like that. Uh, no, I was super uptight, black and white with my answers, and always like, I was like kind of robotic. Right. But here's the thing that I, I learned my mistakes uh, through years and years. I'm like wondering, why am I like this? Why? I have all these credentials. I'm this good at this. You know, but like, why are they picking this guy? This guy's like, you know, doesn't have all the stuff. Mm. I'm like, you know what it is? Because people like him. Yeah. You know, he's very, this guy's very approachable. Right. And, and again, going back to what you said, be like the student of the game, trying to learn from others, you know, and uh, always have that cup empty or half full, whichever way you're going to look at it. But uh, 
there's always something to like pick off of everyone and just learn from them, you know? Yeah, that is, I think that is the best. Um, I mean, that's, that's like the biggest, this is, this isn't even our industry at this point. This is, this is just life advice. Like it's like it's life, man, but it, but this is what will help <laughs> your, this is what will help you in, in, in creative stuff too. It's like, especially if you're working for yourself, you know, this means you're dealing with, you're not in a corporate job where you're dealing with the same people all the time. You're dealing with brand new people. I, I probably, I probably meet on average three or four new people every week, maybe, you know, sometimes they're not as relevant of a, of a connection, but I mean, you're meeting so many new people and I think this is so important for our industry for that reason. Um, so be, be interested. Don't be interesting. That's the, it's from, um, how okay, to win like friends, that. how to win friends and influence people is the oh, book. Oh, that's a great book. Uh, yeah. By, uh, Carnegie. Yeah. By, yeah. By Dale Carnegie. Go read that. If you have not read, if you have not read it, cause that read is, guys, it's, it's guys. almost, it's so basic like you won't you might read it and be like well these these things are a given but they're really they're really not and it, you if you don't if you're not intentional about these things like you said it takes practice if you don't intentionally practice just the skill of listening to another person you won't be that good at it and going off of books like or going off of that like a lot of times when you read them you probably know about like 50 to 60 percent already you probably know a lot Right, you're almost reading it, and you're like, "Yeah, I agree with this. I agree yeah, with I this." Knew, like, I knew this, I knew that, but when you read it, and you know, in text, and sometimes they have some diagrams or some like history or some case studies, that's where I feel like you're like, "Oh, okay, that's why." You know, yeah, I do this, but like now I see why we do this and this and that, and why why it benefits us. And yeah, it's like there's always something to learn. And there's this other book I read. I feel like I knew eighty percent, but there's that twenty percent where okay all right, I actually like that. You know, that's actually very valuable to me, you know, because it's like things I, I really got to work on. I'm like, damn, you know, so it's... Uh, One yeah. is just as simple as, uh, I mean, going to the listening. Everything I think goes back to just listening and being interested. Uh, and the, and, one, and something that goes along with that is just remembering people's names. Like I was I was talking to um, to a friend and I'm like... You know that guy, you know, when you're in a new group of friends, you know, you're, you're with one person you already know and then they bring you around a new group of people, let's say. And uh, in that new group of people, there's always one guy who will go around and introduce himself and then he'll say your name back, right? And then at the end, when he's leaving, he'll say, see you later, Mark, see you later, Joe, see you later, Linda. It's like all of a sudden in your mind, that guy's a little bit nicer. He's a little, even if it's just a little bit, it's like assuming he's not doing it you know, it's, it's tough because it, it almost could seem fake. That guy almost sometimes seems a little bit fake, but I think so that's... Confidence. It's, and he remembers your name. Which remembers is, your name. That's, that's tough, dude. It's I, tough with the foreign names, too. It's really tough yeah, with it's the... it's tough to remember names. Yeah. I try my best to remember. I, I always have to repeat it. I, so I always try to get in the habit of, uh, you know, my name is Sky, what's your name? Bob. And then a minute later, I ask him again, what's your name again? You know, it's like... A, I, if you I, forgot I, it, I, ask. Yeah, if you I, forgot I, it, I, just hey, be like, I, hey... I'm so bad with names, just... And then yeah. after a bit, you remember, you know, so it's like, uh, it's the habit I always do now because remembering the name is, it, it, it'll help you. It'll, it's really good. It's really, and plus like, it makes the other person feel really, you know, good about you. Just like, it feels like you lets them know you actually care. Cause you know, yeah, exactly. there have been times, um, probably a lot of times, honestly, if I could think about it where I'm in a group and I just straight up am hanging out with a whole group of people and I'm like. I don't know this guy's name and I just don't ask yeah. the whole night and yeah, I just dude. never found out. And it's like, wow, like I'm kind of an asshole for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to like admit that, Hey, I'm just bad at it, but then you just get, you know, but you got to do it early on. You can't be like two hours yeah. in and it's too late. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, shit, I, I didn't ask him. I've been talking to him all night. I can't be like, Hey, by the way, I don't know your name, bro. <laughs> Or yeah, or just figure out the person's name is somehow. The best is like you're listening person. to the conversations and then you hear it. You're like, yes, okay, now I know it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, remembering names, it's it's challenging. Okay. Definitely. Um, but all right, let's switch up. To, let's switch the gears. What um, like? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, have yeah. what have you been working on? What are what are your goals? It's still the new year. It's still. I think Happy New Year is still appropriate for all January. Maybe not anymore, but Happy New Year. Yeah, and what's so. what's on your What's on your goals? Like, tell me, tell me what you got going on. Let me see. Um, Are you still a firefighter? I'm still a firefighter for now. Yeah. Fighting the Chicago fires. Are you on Chicago Fire, the show? 
I uh I might have been in an episode. I don't know which one. I, I Wait, really? Call, but do they yeah, do they but, use actual firefighters ever? Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, they do cuz you got to know how to use the equipment and stuff and know the procedures and things. No like way. That. Wait, so you, I was actually totally joking. You you're actually you've been in an episode. I think so. I was in Set, you, know, you were on a set, yeah, as like an extra. Set. But I don't know which episode that is. So I don't. <laughs> I haven't kept up with it. I'm just picturing you with your with your yeah. shirt off, you know, with the axe, with the axe. Oh, that. <laughs> the calendar. What came to me, but I'm just like I got asked to do it. I'm like, okay. I wish I had more time to get ready, but it, I made it work. Um, you looked good, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, 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 you know, it, the thing is too for me, it's like I'm not getting any younger. So I'm just like, hey, I'm still, I'm going to do a well, lot, you know. The calendar shoot. Yeah, kind of thing. So that's the, call, the whole mindset I had with it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, back to goals. Uh, we talk about creatively or, I don't know, socially or financially. Anything. I mean, anything. Whatever whatever you want to tell people about or, or tell um, me. I like to think I it's like tough to do. It's tough to do this recording not thinking yeah. about people listening. That's what I find. It's like, I don't want, but I want the conversation to be as least like that as possible and i think facetime yeah. is like the best way to st- that's another reason it's, it feels the most just like we're talking you know it doesn't feel like yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. talking to an audience the, the this is great love it i think you it's know? good it's i think good. it's really good it's a good self-reflection of everything you know yeah um let me see uh okay so i i'll start off creative creative because it's like a kind of a creative podcast right yeah definitely so my i think for me like uh i think this year the most important thing is really focus on the personal branding because for a long time, I've never been in front of the camera because I mean, truthfully, I never liked it, but I realized how there's a thing like where it's time, it's time to like present myself a time to like have people get to know who I am and just try to like really talk from the camera. And for me too, like for me, it's just to really get confidence from the camera and just open new avenues of different type of content and hopefully get into long form. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's those are my goals. Just talk about anything. Like what we're doing right now, like the, the, like the life stuff, situations. I would love to like talk about those experiences and see how, you know, so what do you situation to a solution. What type of stuff do you see yourself focusing on? Do you see yourself focusing on stuff like that where it's almost more so you talking like it's almost like it can be longer form or even if it is short form or do you see yourself doing like more technical things i don't think technical as much i I, i'll i feel like technical won't be as difficult because that's something like you just show how things are done it's very procedural right but when it comes to talking in front of a camera let's say an advice or like this is how i did this it could get a little personal. It's, it's like showing like a more of a down to earth. Hey, this is real life, real time. This is how I did it. And this is how I made it happen. Right. And this is what, you know, it, which is, it's like a kind of gray area stuff. And the other type of content is again, a lot of stuff like cinematics, try to like really like showcase like what my life is like or traveling, for example, these amazing exotic places yeah and just to tell a story like that's that's the thing telling a good story just pe- get people engaged um but just just to show like how like there's so much stuff out there in the world you know and how it can really improve your life for me it, it's just creating mm. has opened a lot it's, it's a double-edged sword it has a has so many things where it opened like my mind to different places where I wouldn't have like done if I wasn't a creator. Right. So, so like, what about, what is that for you? So I think we were talking about this before you were talking about, and it's very similar how creating has uh, brought people together, how it gets you reconnected with old friends, make new friends. It gets you accessibility to go to places or events or situations or like uh, opportunities that you couldn't have done with just being, you know, not being a creator. And also, it just really like motivates you to to do better. And and there's this book I'm reading. It's called uh, uh, The Creative Act. It just like teaches like why we create. Mm. Uh, and there's like an important part where like we create because it's like it's like a, our memoir of our life and the thing is too as long as it influences or positive influences one person 
it's already a great thing you're doing, you know, kind of thing. So it's like, uh, right. I have heard that before. But yeah. So I could talk, talk about this all day, but it's, it's so, and it's also, uh, it also helps with the mental health. And I feel like it's my way of, it's a creative outlet to bring a message or just to really express how I'm feeling about certain things, which is obviously the exciting part, you know? So I feel like yeah. everybody needs some type of outlet. Some yeah. type of expression, you know? For for me, going off of what you said about, you know, bringing you to new experiences and, and you know, obviously from there getting to like meet new people and stuff. Um, for me, it's almost, it's just like something to do. It's like, I don't really want to just go be a tourist. You know, I don't, exactly. I don't want to go and, you know, quote unquote sightsee, you know, I don't want to go and sure. I mean, I, I'll do my fair share. I, I like, you know, architecture. I like museums as much as the next guy, but like the thing that I always want to go and do is shoot photos and, and take videos of, of where I'm going. You know, like I was at the beach, um, this morning and the thing that motivated me to go get up early and go watch the sunrise and have that experience was taking photos. And if it wasn't for the photos, I might not have done it. I might not have actually gotten out of bed and, and that early exactly, yeah. and did that. Not that I even, it pushes I, you. I didn't meet anybody, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a nice it really experience. Pushes you. It pushes you to like new challenges in life that you wouldn't have done if you weren't a creator, you know? Uh, like for example, uh, uh, Bali, I recommend that trip to, for anybody. It's a, absolutely amazing i feel like it kind of saved me in some ways how but how is that how is that so before bali and you kind of saw how what i what i was dealing with i feel like i was dealing with a lot of like mental struggles like again like common stuff like perfectionism um comparing like you're not satisfied where you're at, you know, you feel like you're behind. It's like, a, it's like always a constant feeling that you're behind. You would say these things and I would look at you and be like, you're crazy. Yeah, no, but it's true. Like yeah. it might not look like it, but it's a constant battle of like perfectionism and procrastination. Yeah. I think that's a common problem a lot of people have. And I, I'm going to have to admit, I'm still kind of battling it. And I, but I've definitely made a huge progress compared to the last time you saw me. Yeah, so that's Bali, great. Yeah, just going to Bali, and I was there for about 25 days. I made sure, like, every day counted. I woke up early in the morning, cast, caught the sunrise, the sunsets, and it also, like, really, like, engaged me to connect with the locals. And that was one of the most beautiful things, get to know the people, the natives of the country. And it's just, like, connecting with them, their life, how, how it is, what's it like living in Indonesia, and, and meeting, like, people from different parts of the world too. I got to meet with some Australian people, Australian mm. friends. Uh, it was just interesting. And it just, it was so cool to just really connect with everyone and really like, it just really challenged you. And being on the road on the bike, you have to be, it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a kind of a challenging terrain in Bali. You have to be on this motorbike and I had to carry minimal gear. And I had to really think and figure out like as a, a travel creator, how I'm going to pack all this and go to these destinations and capture it. And, it did. It's it's an absolutely unbelievable experience, and it caught. It, and the most important thing is, like for me, it created this like habit of like, hey, you got to get up and do something. Get you know, after like, it. Create. Get after it. You know, go wake up, catch the sunrise, uh, get that camera out. You know, get in the habit of getting the camera out, record anything. You know, right. And then get in front of the camera. So it really like broke that shell of like discomfort. Like I got out of my comfort zone mm. and to really push myself. So I was really grateful for that. And, um, it's, and then, yeah, man, I mean, it, it, it was so worth it. It, it was one thing that, um, sorry if I'm going a little off tangent, but no, uh, no. there, you know, I know a lot of people like they either get therapy or they just go out party or drink or something like that or work out or something like just to get your, get your outlet, get to, just to release some stress. If any of, if all of those things for me, it wasn't enough, it wasn't, it was just not not fixing my issue, but traveling to Bali, going to somewhere like a foreign land I've never been before, it really just like, it really just like refreshed me, it cleansed me. And I was like, it's, it's like, it's like a brand new year for me. And then I just did all the stuff I just uh, told you guys about. I uh, just really challenging myself. And uh, this it, is, it was, this is really so amazing. interesting to hear you say this really. stuff because it's almost it's if you really think about it and, and I'm sure you like you won't take offense to this because you're you it's like a cliche almost it's like it's like oh like 
are you down? Just go travel and see the world. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's but, but it's just that simple, man. Well, I think I think the the new there's nuance here though. There's a lot of nuance here. I think that the so you know, uh, oh man, this is this is a whole topic. So Cody Co is you Cody Co is a YouTuber, and he has this video. It's like it's titled "Quit Your Job and Travel Forever" or something like that, and it's hilarious. Oh, that's my dream. You know what I mean? You know you know the video I'm talking about. He talks about the fart content. It's the fuck around, relax, and travel content, and it's it's FOMO content is what he talks about. It's it's the type of content where it's like it's so generic. It's like this is this is like when Instagram first came out. Everybody wanted to be like Jay Alvarez, right? And um, I mean, honestly, even even Sam Colder does uh, content like this, where it's like you have the teal and orange look, and and you have G wagons and private jets, and yeah. you're doing backflips off of the you know into the water, and the sunset is behind you. And, um, but, but let's just pause this for a sec. I think the difference with you though, based on what you're saying is instead of trying to, I think, I think a lot of that, I think a lot of that idea is like this FOMO idea. It's like, you're missing out on things that are happening elsewhere. And so what happens is people get, have this idea is my life's not good enough. I need to run away. I need, I need to go find something that's out there. And I think the difference with what you're saying is you used this trip a lot more intentionally and it, something clicked in your mind and you said, wait, I, I can, I can have the same mindset, not in Bali. Is that right? I hope so. It's what I'm <laughs> saying, but yeah, it's just, uh, no, that's, that's what I was hoping for. And, uh, I'm still feeling it. I'm still feeling like the jitters and the excitement. And I, you know, the thing is too, it really like opened my mind. What's more important out there, you know? I feel like I was so hard on myself as a creator that you have to be, get this, you have a deadline, you have to make sure you get this point at this time. And then um, it, you, I, I basically overwhelmed myself before. And recently, uh, it's dangerous. a lot of people, yeah, it just, I, I just thinned myself out and, and guess what? Nothing was getting done. Right. So I just adopted this new, new mindset. It's like a, the new, the no zero days. And I, I'm sure you've heard of it. So if, every day I, I try to get, some type of rep uh, and something. And there's this thing called a two minute rule. Um, there are times where I just don't want to edit shit. I just don't want to do anything. But I try to like push myself for two minutes, try to edit something for two minutes. Sometimes two minutes becomes five, becomes 10. Mm -hmm. I, I did 10 minutes of editing for this day. I did something for that day. And, you know, and same with working out, same with reading a book, same with like learning, uh, you know, I'm learning Spanish right now, you know? It's like, it's like at least I do two minutes of it or 10 minutes of it. I have no zero days. So, and, and so, and the beautiful thing is too, sometimes you get in this zone, you become that two minutes becomes half an hour, two hours, four hours, you know? So right. it's like, so it, that is like the, the new like mindset I, I've adopted. Just try to really put some type of work in, even if you don't feel like it and just no zero days. That's, so. I love that. And it, it's um, like, it's, it almost is, you know, Again, it's almost cliche advice, but it's 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 great just to be able to give yourself that credit. Uh, I think a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people will beat themselves up way too hard and and you know say, oh, I didn't, but I'm not this good. I'm not as good as this person. Blah blah. blah. It's like, but you got your rep, and uh, and that is more than a lot of people. Um, and it's and you got you got it in, whatever that rep is yeah, in. And and it adds up. You know, for me, it's been yeah. about like a little close to two months. I look back at my, because it's, I have, I have like over four terabytes of footage. I've actually ran through all of it. I've sifted through all of them. They're all color graded. Oh, wow. And I'm like, man, I did a little bit of each every day. And then it's been about two months. Dude, I got a lot done. I just got to piece it together at this point. And how do you, so do you grade first? How do you, how do you go about like, well, first of all, okay. what are you trying to make? And second of all, how do you, how are you going about it? That's the challenge, but uh, I'm just trying to figure that out. But <laughs> you I, don't know, do you? I'm gonna make like a you know the short form, like the fast paced like highlight reel, like a short highlight reel with a good song. Uh, but eventually, I want to show like the people of Bali, like the the people who who live there. I, yeah, I, I just love that culture stuff, man. It was just so awesome. To what and extent then, did you um, interact with the people? And based off that interaction, how how much did did you of that did you film? Dude, honestly, that's mostly what I filmed. I, I mean, I captured the locations, but the second most footage I have is are, is the people, like 
And Did you talk talking. with them? Is it is it recording you yeah. talking with them? Talking with them. Do they um, speak English? Believe it or not, they speak really good English. Oh wow! They have some accents, but obviously sure. they, they speak. They like like uh, English is taught like while they're in schools. So oh, that's phenomenal! They, it's like their second language, so they all a lot of them. I mean, there's some people who are super old school. They don't speak a speak of English, but a lot of them do. But yeah, for me, I um, I, I just caught a lot of moments, faces. Uh, just the faces of, it's, it's how I'm going to title it, like the faces of Bali or the humans of Bali. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's yeah. that already sounds like uh, different and potentially a lot more like, uh, you know, less just less shallow take than I think a lot of yeah, like creators are going for, like especially the ground of, with the, on the same level with the people and. I loved it, and uh, I got some dope drone shots. They're great, it's right? Like, but but that's not what you're going. You're not going for the Jay Alvarez thing or the the colder thing. Of seeing the people, you know. So, right. And then eventually, uh, if so, that's a challenge. I, I didn't plan to make a long form. I just filmed whatever. I didn't really have a plan. I just said I, I want to capture these. I want to capture this location. This this and that. I never had like a storyboard or anything just caught everything so like the way it's looking like i may have to like narrate or like talk about my trip you should you, know, it, you definitely should it, like yeah that's that's so for the long format we'll talk about it why this place is amazing how it pretty much like really like help me like you know mentally with a lot of stuff hmm. so and hopefully someone will some someone will watch it and, hey you know what maybe that's what i should do travel somewhere and maybe they'll clear my head it just might yeah you know, so without without maybe yeah maybe that should be the the message of it you know it sounds to me if you're going to make a longer form thing it it needs to there needs to be a message there and i think that um that could be that could be a a potentially good one i mean just the idea that again traveling with some kind of intention not to escape from your problems but to um as a as a reset and there's a slight difference there it's still it's a fine line you know what i mean because if you if you travel and you have this mindset of oh this is going to solve all my problems it probably no, won't. But I didn't cuz no. <laughs> I was scared when I got there. I was like, man, I'm here. Oh, uh, th- th- there's some anxiety, you know, you're you're pretty cuz I was mostly alone at the time, you know, in mm. Bali and I'm just like, man. Wait, man, were you were movie. you really? I thought you were with uh, I know you were with Ben the, and then so I was with Ben we for the first 4 or 5 days, but after that I was on my own, you know. I, I but then again. And what about Brian? Friend, is a guy out there, right? I actually didn't see Brian. He was like oh. all over the place. So uh, interesting. But as soon as I landed, he as soon as I was about to leave, he just landed. So it, I didn't get to see Brian. You know, oh, okay. Like, next time. But yeah, but but I'm like really happy how everything happened for me. It's just like uh, it's just. I got there. For me, it was like last night. Oh, Ben, I heard you're in Bali too. Yeah, he's like, Ben's like, oh, dude, I got an extra space in the villa. If you need a space for a few nights, like, you know what? Yeah, I didn't book anything, so like, hell yeah, nice. And then I was hanging with the people in the villa. There's uh, there's these Australian uh, girls. Uh, they were they're fucking cool, cool people. We were just hanging out all day. Got to meet uh, this awesome creator. He's like uh, one of the OGs, Elliot. Then I got to meet Simon. He hooked us up with a free villa for a few nights. So oh wow! Just, like, I wasn't planning for any of this, but it just kind of just I went with the flow. And figured it as a you know on the way, so it's another reason for community. Just knowing one yeah. guy who happens to be on the other side of the world, and you know and yeah. boom. And for me, Ben was the gateway for me. So because I was gonna solo everything, but I think the experience, I don't know, might not been as good. But I think in the beginning, I think like someone was like maybe holding my hand, helping me out a little bit. But then I was able to take the training wheels up and go on my own kind of thing. I think that's why it's important to go for like longer than like, you know, a lot of people do week trips or, or even less than that. And it's like, at that point you're just a tourist. Like you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta, you gotta jump in with two feet. I feel like you were there 25 days. You said. Yeah. And uh, I I got this from, uh, uh, there's another podcast from Andrew James. He's talking about traveling. And I feel like a lot of people, he says like, when people travel for like just a week, they're always rushing into the touristy stuff. And you were saying like really try to like get yourself involved with the people because that's what makes the trip. Mm. Absolutely right. You know? Man, and I think that would be – I just think about my own traveling. I mean I think that would be the the biggest challenge for me uh, to be honest. Like I – you know, it, without somebody holding my hand or without being there with a friend, you know, to just – you know, how, how did you make, I'll ask you this, how did you make interactions? Like if you were, 
give me an example of someone you interacted with and how you came about that. Not the people in the villa, okay. but sure. Yeah, I'll give you a, a really simple one, and anybody can do it. Uh, so in Bali, they have their own Uber, which is called Grab or GoJack. So and it's easy. It's, it's way better than Uber. Like, well, it makes it better than Uber. The app is so sophisticated. Oh, okay. And you get food, and it's cheap. So I grabbed the ride, and this is when me and Ben were taking a ride to Nusa Penida. It's a beautiful island uh, off the uh, southeast of Bali. So we're going to spend a, uh, a night over there. So I was in the bike. So the, everybody rides a bike. It's like there's a few cars, but everybody rides a bike. So I was on the back of this uh, grab uh, driver, and then it was, a, it was a long ride. It was a good 30, 40 minutes out. And you're on the back of his motorbike. Yeah, and then, you know what? I just pulled, and I was saying, hi, what's up? What's your name? And his name was, um, man, what's his name? Uh... <laughs> I, Speaking I, I, of remembering I gotta remember, names, <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, I gotta remember the name. Uh, oh, Tony, Tony, yeah, Good. Tony, Tony, Tony was his name, and and dude, you know what? I just pulled out my phone and just start like interviewing him, recording him, and I posted on my stories actually a few times, and he was just telling me about his life in Bali, and um, oh, man, he told me a lot of stuff, some dark stuff. Like he's he's grateful the tourist people are coming in, brought a lot of wealth to the country, but he's just saying like. It, it didn't really help out the locals, you know, it helped a lot of businessmen, but not the locals, which mm. is pretty sad. But, you know, I really got to know him. He was telling me he worked super hard, you know, uh, doing grab. And then I gave him extra money at the end. And then we had a connection. We give hugs. And then we actually actually exchanged phone numbers, too, at the end. You know? Oh, wow. So it's like a WhatsApp. You can hit him up on WhatsApp. Yeah. And then he actually said Happy New Year to me uh, when, you know, New Year. He, wow. he remembered me. So, nice. You know, it's just like those those little connections you know it was just, it just you'll never forget it it was so beautiful it's just simple simply just talking to someone uh giving you a ride in bali you got to know his name uh, i remember his name <laughs> well tony's tony is a is a that's got to be like his american his name. English name yeah his, uh, american name but yeah, yeah but yeah so but that's uh, that's amazing i mean but still i i think a lot of people a lot of people just wouldn't do it and um i think that's something that's really special about traveling is uh, I mean, at least I find in other countries, um, I haven't been to Bali, but I, th I find in other countries like, go. like you're, I know I'm going, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm definitely getting out there Let soon. Me know when you're going. <laughs> oh man. Do you want to go back? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm going to go back in August actually. Really? Um, I yeah, would love I to. I would love to. Do I actually consider living there? That's really? the other thing I did when I was over there. I, I had another friend, she's from Chicago and she's been living in Bali for a while. So I hit her up. And her boyfriend's a huge real estate guy. And I've been picking his brain. I'm like, so how do you get into real estate here and get property? And he was telling me. He does real estate in Chicago or Bali? Oh, no, in Bali. In, wow. In, in Indonesia. And I'm like, that's another thing um, that really sparked my mind when I was over there. It wasn't just about creating, but it's also about like potential new living, uh, you know, space or living conditions, or just a home, a new home, basically. I mean, I've looked on Airbnb, and I mean, there is some baller places you can rent uh, yeah. in Bali for like thirty you know, bucks, some thirty bucks a night, twenty bucks a night on some of them. I'm like, I'm like, and it's if like, you can make, if you can make it the the American dollar and live in Bali, you're gonna do really well. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that part out right now. So I mean, I mean, yeah. I I'm sitting here with all this editing work right now, and like, I'm like. I'm like looking for places in Chicago where it's negative seven, and I'm like, wait a minute, Hell no. why don't I'll I go to back. Florida or Bali? I'll come back till it's June or July. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, uh, my my friend and I actually have an Airbnb there because uh, we couldn't we couldn't find a place. There's no there's no rental places where we wanted to live. Uh, and, well, there was, but then uh, we had an issue, and uh, and then the same issue happened again where they went with a different applicant. So we're like, fuck it, we're just gonna get an Airbnb for a month, so at least we're there and. Um, I'm trying to get him there and so he can, you know, network and start making friends and everything. And, um, I miss it. So I want to get back there. Um, but I'm not even going to be there most of the month, actually. Love to have you back, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to be in, uh, I'm going to be in Costa Rica for a little bit. I'm also going to be in, Enjoy, in Vegas for the I Super Bowl. I want to go there. I heard beautiful things. Yeah. Same. Definitely same. Um, there's a lot of places I want to go, man. There's a lot. It's just, it's uh, going to take a lifetime to see all of it. And right. Again, it goes back to just just start start somewhere right pick your top you know at least one i think for me uh this wedding i went to guatemala in 2021 i think mm. uh really jump started my journey to travel consistently mm. you know in 2023 and dude i i'm like 
why didn't I do this earlier? You know? Right, but, right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, man. And, and then here's the FOMO. You know, it's like, damn, I, I'm, I'm 26. I'm like, ah, I should probably start just doing already this. Already. Traveling, yeah. But you know, I, I guess like have extra time for yourself to really explore. You know on your own or something or, the, or, or with a friend if anything yeah so, right i mean i think there's there's a lot of value in doing it by yourself you know it's like you said it's like if there is um it's good to have a friend there but i think also if you don't you have to engage with people and if that's what's going to make yeah. the trip then i think i it's, personally i know if i was there with a friend i would be leaning into the friend to like i don't know lead the way or at least just same as, uh, you know, Americans do just be Americans over there. You know, it's like, instead, yeah. if you're by yourself, I feel like you have to engage. Um, yeah, get out of your comfort zone. It, you right. Know, sometimes you just got to practice a little bit. You know? Exactly. Your first, like my first trip wasn't, uh, I was in a nice hotel and everything around me was really nice. So it was easy. Right. And, and there was a big group of people. We all like, we're all there for the same thing. We're at a wedding. We all want to check out the area. So... That was a good start, but then eventually, you know, you know, work your way up. You don't have to like, but solo is great. It definitely uh, mm. will definitely challenge you. Get out of your comfort zone. Right. Um, what else can we talk about, man? I mean, uh, I feel like we're talking about life. We're know? talking about lots of life things. This is good, yeah. though. This is this is great. Yeah. Um, but so uh, going off of what you said, I, I kind of wanted to chime in with this before. Just um, the the whole. Uh, my whole do more with less things. So this is the do more with less podcast. Yeah. My whole brand is do more with less now. And I think um, there's so many reasons I like it. There's so many reasons. Uh, and one is just with this mindset, it, it it not only is doing things. Well, so we're talking about, you know, doing this podcast, for example, just over FaceTime. And uh, rather than saying, like you said, oh, wait, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. But this is far from perfect. You know, I couldn't even figure out the audio situation now, so I got it on my phone here. Uh, and it's it's going to be far from perfect. But the fact of the matter is we're getting it done. And I think that Agreed. that's why it's it's so important to just let yourself do things that are not perfect and, and, and just give yourself the credit, like you said earlier, of just getting that rep in. And, it's, and that is actually going to be way more fulfilling because there's no such thing as perfect at the end of the day. Even if we did a podcast with um, the, the best lighting and the best uh, audio and mics and everything, it's a hassle. It's a whole job. You know what I mean? That's that's like and we, we clearly we couldn't even make it happen. So it's like, hey, why not do why not do it with less? And yeah, um, it's simple. And same thing with that. You know, just for example, that that tutorial video I made, I think there was a lot of times um, there was a lot of times where I wanted to either get in front of the camera and say something, or I wanted to, um, I don't know, just, just like, I, you know, teach, teach a little tip or a trick that I had. And I think the thing that stopped me, um, is, you know, you go on YouTube and you look at these guys and they have this really nice setup and it looks really pristine and, um, or, or, you know, you got guys with their, with their double monitor set up and they got their tube lights in the background and they got, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. no, I mean, this stuff is cool. And, and I mean, you, your, your setup's dope. Uh, but, um, but point being is you can achieve the same goal. You know, that, that reel that I just had that blew up, my mom filmed it. <laughs> On my phone. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. My mom filmed it for me on my phone in her living room. I'm like, Mom, for your phone. On my phone. Your phone. It was my phone. Dude, that, that's the thing that's amazing about you. you. Somehow make something like, you know, either like not the best camera, not the best setting, but you like solve the problem of like making it look good. Yeah. And that's what, what's your Thank you. And you know what? That's what really impressed me about you. When you were editing, your the whole your whole mindset of like the theory behind the edit, solving the problem, right? Like understanding what tools to use, and I'm just looking at you like, dude, this guy is like, <laughs> he's like doing it right, you know? Like I feel like so many of us have taken shortcuts and trying to make it look good, but don't understand why it does or how we really did it. But you're like, you understand what what needs to be done, what goes next. I'm just like, dude, this is. This is like a really strong core foundation that you did, and it's paying off. Thank and you. I knew your time was coming, you know, and I looked up to that. So to me, I'm like, 
man, that's that's a really good way to do it. Again, like problem solving, well, it, the tools, the mindset, it's simple. the mindset. Yeah, a hundred percent. And well, the mindset is it's exactly what you're saying. It's it's using the tools to solve problems, not. Um, not looking at your footage and being like, ah, but we missed this shot or like, ah, it's, it's screwed up. Like you never, you train your mind as an editor to always be solution oriented. And you always have the mindset of, you know what, like this can look good somehow, even if it's not how I planned. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, my brother said this the other day, uh, I forget who the quote is from, but he said a quote to me. He said, art is what you get away with. Someone look up where that quote is. I don't know where the quote's from, but art is what you can get away with. And I love that because that is, that's, that is do more with less. That is in essence, the same thing. It's, it's, you do, you, you can actually, you can cut tons of corners. You know, your, your, your workspace can be a shit show. Your timeline and your editor might be, you know, an absolute catastrophe. The, the set might've blown up after you were done using it, but Hey, guess what? If you show people the video and the final product is good. No one cares if it was shot on a potato. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it, you you could have you could have used an iPhone light as your key light if it, if you made it look good. Then it'll then it'll be fine. And there's there's purists out there who will probably the purists are not my audience. <laughs> the purists are the opposite of my audience. You know the guys where it's like, oh, you got the Sigma lens, you didn't get the Sony G Master lens. It's like, oh yeah, 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 because it doesn't really matter. It's like the create. It's how you use it. And honestly, like the audience you're attracting, which is probably the majority, right? More more kudos to you, you know. And uh, and dude, I think it's, it's a fine line between half-assing something or like trying to find. It's not, this is the nuance of it. It's not trying to find an easy solution. It's just knowing that there is a solution no matter what. Because your stuff, it's not easy to do. It takes time. Like every second, the details you put in, like you know how to do it, but it's, it, it, it takes time, you know, like the yeah. intricate details. You still got to have and, mad patience. Yeah, and that's another thing, you know, patience with yourself, you know, as a creator, because it takes time. Everyone's in different timelines, Hundred percent. Really be peaceful. No pun with intended. Work, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing about sometimes short form content. You know, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but like, sure, talk about anything. I, I feel like our attention span is, oh, man, it's just gotten so shortened, and it's just like we can't pay attention to something for more than like two, three seconds these days. And I feel like there's, it's like it's been like a, a hamster wheel with the uh, social media and everything. You know what's and funny? I feel like, sorry, go go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, you're saying no. Oh, I was gonna say, you know, what's funny is like you get people making content that is, like, in essence, talking about how talking about this idea of how we're so saturated. It's all the same thing. Everybody's copying each other, and those people making the content are also making it like the same way. <laughs> they're 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 trying to make it like for the algorithm. Like, here's the thing, I'll. I think the important thing as an artist or a create, I honestly hate the term creator. I think it's corny, but anyway, as a creator, um, I think the thing you should do is have separation of church and state. I think you should, you should make your art and you should not care. You should make it and then don't even post it like post it fine. But like the point is, is you make that art for you. You make that art for the beauty. Right. And then you have the opposite side of the coin, which is the complete opposite. It says, you know what? I am making this for the algorithm. I am doing this as an ad. Like this is literally just meant to get eyeballs and I am completely selling out and I don't care who knows it. And like, for example, like that, that Google Earth video, um, I, I know that, I mean, I, I, had a, I had a hunch that it would go viral because everybody I've told about Google Earth Studio didn't know yeah. what it was. It's really valuable what you did. That content is very valuable. I'm sitting here yeah. like, one guy comments, he's like, you know, you have to have the watermark on there. And I'm like, ah, I'm with 4 million views. I'm like, is Google coming after me? Are the AI robots showing up at my door? And I'm like, I don't know. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the logo on there at one point. So it's like, okay. But yeah. But thank but you, though. And, and, and I know it's, it's valuable. valuable. That's why people love it. You know, that's, and that's another side of the coin, you know, like providing value. If you love doing that, dude. It, yeah, yeah. But it's still, it's, it's questionable how much value is actually there. I, I think it's, it's still, 
if I were to sit there and say, okay, if you ask me which thing is better to make, do I make a full video that's going to actually teach somebody how to use the tool and you can sit there for okay. 10 minutes and actually learn how to use the tool? Or do I make this jumpy, catchy, I mean, dude, the amount of whooshes in there is, is, is absurd. It's like, like the, like, and then, and then the, 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 the video itself is like crack. You know what I mean? Because it has to be. It's otherwise people won't watch it. So half of it is that yeah. the idea is there, but the other half is that the video is, is you know, there's a little cut in, and then there's another one, and then it's it's like keep watching, keep watching, and I'm making it like that intentionally because I know that's how it's gonna, that's that's how it'll blow up, and lo and behold, it works. But then again, I'm feeding into the, to the machine that that we're talking about. I guess so, but it's, uh, I mean, when I looked at it, it was very unique because like. Thank you. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who can't afford a drone or just never really. Uh, okay, sure. It's it's unique because of the idea. Yeah, the whole less is more is your brand. You know, you are in line with your brand, which is like that's a win for you, man. I feel like Thank a lot you. of people like go off brand just because of the algorithm. I don't think you went off brand at all. You literally were in your realm. That that's your whole synopsis of your brand, and it, that's dude. That was perfect. You know, literally like it's. But it's it's free, right? It's you know, free. You need a computer. Yeah. You, you gotta go. You could go to the freaking library to get that done too, if you need to. You know, if you don't have one, you know. But it's like. Yeah, and I, then people hit me up perfect. actually to make them, <laughs> make to make them drone shots in Google Earth Studio, and I'm like, you know, the whole point of the video is that you can do this really easily, and then they're asking, they're willing to pay me to do it, and I'm like, okay. Oh yeah, fuck it. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it is a skill in itself to do that. It is. Hey, and I'm going to make know, a longer yeah. form video. Like Colton just made a reel the other day. And at the end of the reel, he says, go watch the longer video. Hold on, there's a plane going by. I know it's going to pick up this damn plane. Oh, okay. Thankfully, that's been the only one. Oh, with the fire, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he had a short version and you make a longer version. You, you make know? a longer I version. Think, I, think, uh, I think that's the, the real value because then I wish I had made it. I mean, I, I technically still could, but... You still can. I still can. Um, but I want to funnel traffic towards YouTube because I think yeah, that's the best platform still. You can put in your stories, if anything, you know. And yeah. Then, um, well, now I have all the more followers, so they'll, they'll see it now. The people who are. Two and then longer version. Right. You know, because that, that is a great way to get your you know audience from Instagram to, uh, or to, to YouTube. Or to uh, YouTube, you know. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then. And, uh, dude, I'm proud of you for that just because, like, uh, I feel like we get so lost in the algorithm. We're just doing whatever goes viral, and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, uh, you said, like, do it for yourself. You know, create for you. When I first and started, I would save my videos just to Google Drive. And I never – some of them people that people didn't even see or, like, I'd, I don't know. I'd show my mom or dad or I'd – send it to a friend or like if I'm making the video with a, with uh, you know one of my friends who's an artist we would just do it for the sake of it and I think that um, this is where I mean this is a whole rabbit hole of a topic but I mean we could talk about it I just think um, I think our phones have made us sick I think our phones have made us in a way that so yeah. so no I don't even think in a way I, I think our, our phones the, the fact that we're walking around with a cell phone, smartphone it has made us all mentally ill and i think that there's no the damage is done there's no escaping it like i hate to be yeah, you know nihilistic exactly, like that yeah. but it's it's done the damage is done and it's we this is our life now and that's the way that the artist is affected is you you can't make something that isn't you know influenced by something else or or you're you're constantly looking for inspiration and, and it's like, wait, you're not coming up with anything. You're, you're just, because you don't even know how anymore. Yeah. That's honestly, that's kind of like what I'm struggling to sometimes. You know what I think you should do? Yeah. What's up? So, uh, the intern guys, all years, man. <laughs> the, all years. the intern, the intern guys and I, and obviously for like, for anyone listening to this, this is, I mean, I, I would recommend this to anyone who, I mean, if you think you're in a creative rut, if you think you don't have any good ideas, if you it's are over, struggling, it's been a year, bro. <laughs> if you are struggling to think of something, um, it's actually very simple. You put the phone down. You literally have to put it down. And like, I don't mean put it down for an hour or two. I mean put it down for like days. 
And so what the intern guys and I did is I said, look, we're going to do, um, we're going to do three days at a cabin, uh, in the woods, just place, random place in Ohio. Um, they had cows, which was pretty cool. Um, shout out, shout out the cows, but, um, got to feed them. But, um, <laughs> anyway, we, we had, we, we went no internet for two days. And, uh, you know, we let our family know, Hey, we're going off the grid for a couple of days and first day is pretty the same. And the second day it's like towards the end of the day. And you know, you're, you're winding down. We're like, it's a small close quarters cabin. Didn't even have enough beds. I was like sleeping on the ground, uh, which I normally do, but that's all right. Um, and side note and, um, (laughs) I'm, I'm, I guess people think I'm psychotic. I like it. But anyway, um, (laughs) um, we're, we're all in there and we're just talking and all of a sudden it's like, wait, like we're coming up with an idea right now, aren't we? And it's like, yeah, here, here, you come up, you like say something else. Like, let's, let's explore this further because we were going to go take a hike and shoot something the next day. We're like, what do we make? Okay. What are we going to shoot? I'm like, okay, let's, let's tell an actual story. Okay. Do we want it for... Cause I was like, I was like, look, I don't want to make a hyperlapse video. I don't want to, that's what I was, that's, that's what I was calling it. I don't want to make any zoom out transitions. Like my, like my brain has been story. You want a story an actual build. story. Like I, I, my brain has been corrupted by these yeah. concert videos. It's like, it's just eye candy. It's like, and it's yeah, cool it's, and it's not easy to exactly do. That's exactly what I was going through in 2022 and 2023. I feel like I was like doing stuff that again the algorithm and it was and at the time it, it was easy to make you know you right. your concert videos my drone videos like to some people it's, it's hard to do but for me i fly that thing in my sleep and i could just like fit you know and i make it work and you go like, during oh, wow, a sunrise or you go during uh you know henge or whatever and it's like boom yeah. like there is and your two hours later i can make like a really good content and it was that easy and it, the, the the fact that it was easy i was so like i was like a, an expert at it and that's all I was doing, which became the problem, you know, and right. exactly what you were saying, you, you keep doing these concert videos. And then um, I feel like you forget, like, what your true intentions were from the beginning. And it's like, again, I feel like you can't beat that storytelling aspect. I feel that's something like that's the route that I want to go to. And that is the goal. I really got to make it happen. And I feel like you're, you know, you're like craving for it, too. So yeah. yeah. And and there's, you know what the great part is, there's a lot of different ways you can tell a story and the elements of the concert videos, like the, the things that make those concert videos stand out and the things that make your drone work stand out can still be a part of that storytelling, yeah, but it's just part of it. Yeah. But it's, it's all about, um, it, it's just about the intention of it. And, um, right. I think the thing that, that people forget is like you said, why are we even doing this? Like, why, why am I doing this besides money? Because if it's just for money, go sell real estate. If it's just for money, go be a banker, finance person, get a job because it's going to probably be easier. And the the fact of the matter is, um, you know, if you, if you don't learn how to balance the work, you know, for yourself and the client work, which is why, again, I like to say, Hey, have some separation of church and state here, separate the content from the art. Um, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna find yourself as like, like, like where you've, like where you said you've been at just kind of like, wait, what's going on? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. you. And it's not an you, easy question to, to answer. That's it the really thing. really is. Uh, dude, and this is what's uh, so kind of like going back. Like, uh, I would have these talks with my little brother. He's actually right here. Yeah. When we, when we put our phones down, the TV is off, the monitors are off. We were, we we'll, we'll, come up with some type of idea, like what should be our next, what should be your next content, you know? And a lot of time it resorts into talk about your life, talk about your stories, you know, talk about your situation, something right. that will resonate with someone and someone that they could pick it and like learn from it, you know? And it, and that's kind of the route that I'm going, but like, uh, again, it's, uh, there's this, uh, going back to the algorithm talk, I feel like a lot of us, we are sick. We're in this constant hamster wheel and we are feeding the algorithm and we're not really creating what we've always wanted to create from the very beginning. So whenever I get lost, I always think back, why did I even get started from the beginning? You know, and for me, it's just creating beautiful travel videos with a story behind it. And I'm like, that's always been what I wanted to do. And I'm like right now fighting, you know, dear life, just to like 
you know, just to start on that and just, just to get started. And it's, it's, it's not easy because it's like something I haven't done in a while or have never done at all. Sure. Um, but it, I've got to put the reps in, you know? Yeah. So. Some, and it's like you said, it's, it's, can, it can be just get started, like just get started. Just get started. It, it, it could be the hardest part, you know, but um, just get started. I mean, fuck, man, dude. And this is, uh, yeah. this is where, um, you know, like I've, I've talked to my, you know, the intern guys about it. Um, cause I was like, look, um, so I was, I was talking to a different creator <laughs> last night. Um, charge. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so, um, I was talking to a different, uh, artist friend. Um, I will call him an artist cause he definitely is one, uh, last night. And, you know, we were like, he, he was just saying how, you know, like the personal brand stuff is really what he wants to, to hammer this year. And, and that's, that's the thing. What did he say? He said, that's the thing with the highest ceiling. You know, there's only so much you can do as far as like client work goes, unless you're client, unless you're in the perfect situation, unless you're somehow in the absolute perfect situation, which it's very, very difficult to get to, I think. Um, the, the personal branding stuff, your own art, your own work is the stuff that I think will, will actually get you the farthest, right? It, it's, it, it's the long game. It's the, it's the way exactly. long game. And there, the park, bro. and there can be overlap too. Like there can certainly be overlap. Like I'm, I'm grateful enough to, um, or I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where people hire me to make what I think is cool. And I, that's, I mean, it's such a blessing to be able to do that, but still is not exactly what I want to be making it. And, and that's the thing. So, um, the thing that I told my guys is like, look, you got to stop because they're, you know, they're in Cleveland and I'm like, look, you can make another $500 bar video. You can make another, you know, whatever it is, Instagram reel for some guy who wants a Instagram reel made for his car for a couple hundred bucks. You can focus on that, but you have to make your own work. You have to make your own work. And even if you're, even if you're doing it for some money or you're doing it with someone else, and, you know, it's, it's not your own, your literal own story. Like, you know, there's some kind of other influence. You, you have to make work that you are proud of. And um, because that's what's going to get you places. Like, that's what's actually going to, that's my entire thing. It's like, if you, if you can just get good, the work, will, the work will come. Like, you will be successful if you are just good and you get the reps in. Um, but don't it, don't fall into the trap of being a worker essentially is exactly the, yeah that's for me um that's the problem i had too i had so much work and i remember spot to be so like, where are you right now with that you're not you you're saying no um, to clients or like what are you doing been saying no to a majority of them i closed them out I basically i passed it over i handed it down to the the next creator who could take over who's going to be a good fit to the company or to the brand sure um i've been doing i've been just I was offloading it all year in 2023 because, um, again, like, dude, I was, it was exciting to have all these clients come at you. And I felt like, oh, man, I made it. I made it. I made it, dude. I'm making all this money. Great. You know, but going back to what you said, I was getting burnt out. I was getting sick of doing the same thing over and over again. And the scope of the practice of the video wasn't in line to what I wanted to do. And I think going back to what you said again, like, really create for yourself because, that's what's going to keep that's what's going to uh give you that endurance and i think like that's really important because a lot of times people get burnt out and they don't want to do things anymore i think like if you create for yourself you have intention for it and you're giving out a good message and you're really like pleased with it it makes you happy i think that's what's going to keep you like last in the game it lasts in the art of creating right uh, and that's what i found out the hard way and I'm basically fighting my way back and realizing <laughs> that's what's more important, you know. And that's why I tell all these, you know, all the, the new guys or people who are starting out or or in that client-like type of, like, you know, position, getting clients. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, like, always have time for yourself. Save up. Save up so you can ha so you have time and money just to work on your things. Yeah. Because and also, like, don't game. get so – don't get so – like, it's it seems like you're going to – you know, if you're just starting out, you're going to think you're so behind because it's like, wait, I'm only making a 1000 bucks this month, not even maybe for some people if you're just starting out. And, like, you're doing all kinds of work. 
Um, and, and, you know, maybe you're not full time yet. And it's just like the, the thing that you have to remember is it's, it's not just about the making the art for yourself. It's also, it's, it's, you need reps. Like you literally need reps. It's, it's not that like, so, so don't, don't wait for someone to pay you instead prove that you can do it. Like prove I mean, that like you can do it. Work, you know? Yeah, like, do know? spec work and make sure that spec work is something that interests you. Dude, those are fun to do. A hundred percent. That one like, you and Chris dude. did for Oakley was insane. I mean, it was so good. Dude, I would say my favorite and the most fun and very proud work were all spec work. None of them were clients. Isn't that interesting? They were all, and, and and guess what? If spec work goes out well, it can lend you clients clients and they want you to recreate and then, that's the thing right. it, the spec work you redo it it's fun but it, when you do it so much you're like ah, man do the same thing it, 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 again it goes back to the old habits again where you get uh it gets redundant you know you gotta right. find new challenges that's just kind of how the human brain is wired you know if you always if you're the kind of person that wants more you're gonna want to be challenged again and go for something different you know and yeah it, it's not a bad thing but uh, don't get burnt out. Try to like really do for yourself and be in the long game, you know, the long game, man. In uh, it for the long and, game. And, uh, also, uh, just to piggyback off of the long game, uh, when it comes to money, uh, for me again, like 2023, I was making all this money and I felt like, man, I made it, but I got very disappointed. I was, it's like, you have to do all this work or like, even if you offload or like, hire out people out you realize that this isn't the life i wanted Mm. because for me it was just constant meetings and like and closing the deal and that's all i was doing and i was so dissatisfied like even though i got it money's good but i realized that money itself is just not enough or it's not everything if anything and um obviously if you, you got bills you got debt to pay great makes sense if you can figure a way to make money like fast and like get out of debt great but like once you do save up and really spend that time for yourself yeah um uh, and everyone's different everybody some people want to create an agency they want you know i got a friend a really good friend of mine he wants to build an agency that could pull millions you know in in revenue a year great you know and money is his goal but i think there's creativity there too so you know if you're somebody i think you have to really again sit around with no phone and really ask yourself what do you want because if the answer is create an agency i I have a similar friend um where he's like look the he and he's a great editor he's a great shooter great editor he's he uses final cut and uh i'm like dude you're killing it the edits look great and he's not as interested in the edits he doesn't really care as much he he wants the business side of things and he he likes seeing results for his clients genuinely and i think that that's a admirable and b um equally as creative so if if that's what interests you then like by all means don't just sit there and be like oh well uh it's you know i'm i feel like this is about the money it's like you know it it, it shouldn't be about the money either it shouldn't be about the money either way It, it shouldn't be about the money it should always be about the 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 act what is the the act that you're trying to do are you trying to get your clients sales or are you trying to make super cool videos for me it's super cool videos um same here <laughs> super cool videos it, it's just crazy like in 2023 i've always want to be the you know a great creator i want to always get better but it's crazy in 2023 i became a bit good businessman and i'm just like right and this was not the freaking goal but <laughs> happened, you know the, which and is like, hey that's great too that's important to know how to do i, I i'm glad i know how to do it but that's how I learned about myself more, which is like the important part. I, I knew like, hey, I realized, dude, I, I am a creator. I, I, I belong in the field. <laughs> I'm right. Not, uh, I, I don't like pushing the pencil. You know, I'm not a pencil pusher. So it's just like, uh, but that's just, that's the thing too. You just figure out yourself too, you know, as a person. Yeah. And for me, I, when it comes to money, I just need enough. I don't need to be super rich. Just, no. Just enough to have the freedom. And freedom is, for me, is the most important thing. Boom. Like, I was going to say that earlier. I'm yeah. glad you said that. Yeah, enough money to have enough freedom to get it? Great. Because there are guys out there who make a fuck ton, millions, but they just don't have the freedom. And to me, it's kind of not winning. But hey, if you have millions and you could get away from it and just you use what you saved up, great. But it's like, uh, but that freedom is important. And the, um, and I and I mentioned this in the, the last 
episode of this podcast, I remember, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure these are going to get redundant, at least from what I'm talking about. Cause you know, these is, we've already been talking for over an hour. There's only so much I can say, but what I'm saying <laughs> is freedom. I, in my mind comes from being skilled because if you're, I just, I know, I know a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, but like, I, I know people that I think, I don't know. I don't know what people's financial situations all look like. Right. But I, I just know that you're going to struggle because you have two options. You either get a job with someone and you have a boss and you're a worker uh, or you're broke. And the problem with that is as soon as you lose that job or as soon as you don't like that job and you want to quit, um, you're now back to broke again. And uh, unless yeah. it's like a really, really, really good job or, you know, if maybe you really like this job, but which is great. But, you know, being an entrepreneur is not for everybody. But I think the important thing is, and this is my entire argument for doing stuff for you, right? It's not just that it's the art. It's not just that the creative thing, right? It's not just that, oh, creating feels good. That's all said and done. That's, that's, all, that's all great, right? I want to make videos because they're beautiful, right? But I also want to just get really good. So this way I'm a valuable person. And when other people know that you're a valuable person, when you, when you get to a point where you're undeniable, right? Not saying I'm there, not saying that there's I a... I think you are, but... Thank you, man. I mean, look, I don't know. But the point is, is, is there's, it's, never, it's never done. You're never finished. But the point being is, if you can get yourself good enough right? You don't have to be the best, right? That's obviously the goal. Sure. But you don't have to be the best. You, you have to be good enough though. Once you're past a certain threshold of good enough, dude, it's a different ball game. It's so, you feel it. You, you're like, you're like, wow, like I'm, I'm free. Like you feel it. You're like, you're, you're like, and this is something that I want for, for people who are especially in this industry. And you feel like you're like, shit, where's my next check coming from? And then you might, you might take that next gig that isn't, that isn't offering you enough money and it's not something that interests you and you feel like you're stuck. It's, it's possible to get out of that. And the way I think you get out of that is skill. And it's not yeah. just the creative skill. If that's not what interests you, it could also be the business skill if that is what interests you. But it, that's, the, that's the way, that's the path to freedom. It's, it's, Trying to get good for the sake of being good, not for the money. And then the money will come. Dude, that skill you're talking about, dude, I always say three things uh, as a creator. And this is like uh, for anyone who's starting out or to get anywhere, I feel like number one, skills. You know, work on your skills. Be a student of the game. Work on new things or hone the skill you're currently at. And and, and that skill is going to be profitable. Uh, Number two, your interpersonal skills, being sociable, being likable. Things that we, we just talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. And number three, uh, always support your community because you're oh. going to have a community that can back you up and that you can back up. And the respect is, it, you know, with all three, you get that respect, you know? So it's like, uh, I feel like that's where I feel like you become your brand and who you are. And people realize that this guy is good. He is cool. And he supports the community. You know what I, you know what I think, and this is something just, just, and it's perfect. You just said that because I wanted to talk about this to go off of that, right? That third one where we were talking about supporting the community earlier. People, uh, I think, who want to grow, right? They want to grow their personal brand, right? So, so you've, you're, you're talking about like, you know, how do I? So many people I know, right? Not just creators, right? Not just creators, but people in other industries, right? Like there's a, uh, you know, I'm just off the top of my head. There's a guy who owns gyms and he's like, I want to make content, but I don't know what to make. Can you help me? And I, and then I was, you know, helping him, was talking to him about it for a little while. And this was a while ago, but that's just off the top of my head. The point I'm trying to make is, um, I said this the other day, I forget who I said it to, but think of an app on your phone. It's a tool, right? Think of like the Shazam app, right? Or Shazam's built into Siri now. You open up Shazam to do what? Re- record music and it tells you the song. It's like, okay, cool. This app is to fulfill a need that I have, right? Um, instead of thinking about the point I'm trying to make here is when you're making stuff for the internet, you need to think about it even though it's your account, right? It's got your name on it. This is not about you, right? 
the the art on the other hand the art is for you right again that doesn't matter if you even post it or not save it to your freaking dropbox and don't even show anybody it doesn't matter but the the stuff that you're actually putting out there and hoping that it does quote unquote does well right shouldn't be about you it it should be you need to try to position yourself as a resource right and yeah. That and and think Ooh, about it. <laughs> think about it in terms of of if you were literally an app on someone's phone, what app are you? Like what what's why do people click on that app? What's your what's your role? Like and why why this app? Why not another one? You know, why Shazam? Does it does it record things does it record music better than the other similar ones? Probably that's why they are, are partnered with Apple now. <laughs> point point yeah. being is point being is do it for um do it, man, because this and it, this is so this is so nuanced because we're sitting here talking about do it for you, do it for you. Um, but it is doing it for you. I mean, I feel like you like creating something that can benefit someone, that can bring value to someone. I feel like it's like a human uh, thing where you feel good about yourself doing that. You know, you brought value, you brought help, you right? Brought a solution, a resource, like you said, an actual solution, you know? not not just what you want to make. You know, I'm not gonna obviously. I I, I don't want to name any names on like something like this, but like point being is like, I know people who are making content and they're spending a lot of time on it. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, who does this help? Like who, who's your audience? Like who really cares? And like, and like the type of content this person I'm talking about is making is it, there is stuff out there that's like that, but it's just, it's like nonsense. And it's like, it's like, yeah, there's big TikTokers that blow up from nonsense, but it's like, that's, yeah. that's such a not, um, like, I couldn't do that, you know? Yeah. No, and it's such so a, I don't think that's viable. Like, I, I just don't think that's at least not for me. It's like, so the opposite of what I would ever do. And like, for, for example, you know what the best example here that I'll say is like rappers, like artists, not to like sit here and just bash every artist that wants to do music, but if you're sitting there and you think in 2024 when everyone and their brother wants to be a musician or artist, whatever, and you think that everyone's going to care when you put out your music and you're saying, look at me, everyone look at me. That's what you're doing. It's, it's all yeah, about you. It's a- and, and it's like, dude, you, you're not bringing any value. You think your song is, is that great? Dude, you, you paid 50 bucks for a beat from some random guy who's not that good at production. You're, you're recording it on, on a potato. You, you don't know anything about music. Probably. I'm just assuming there's a lot of the case. A lot of people, right. I used to shoot like hood rap videos. I'm like, dude, your song is trash. And like, and like, I didn't tell them that. I I hope none of these, I hope none of my ex clients are watching this, but it's like, (laughs) it's like, yo, look, dude, I'm sorry, but you're like, your song's not it. And, and, and even if it was, even if it was, that's still not that valuable. And you have to find a way to position yourself in a way where you're providing value, valuable, you're, you're being useful. You're being useful. And I saw this video. There's, sorry, I'm rambling, but this is like, I, no, you go, you go. yeah. So I'm, I'm going in. So, so like I saw this video from someone, uh, as a YouTuber I watch and like his whole video was like, he's like, um, like almost like a guy, he's like a guy's like self-improvement guy that I used to watch. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yo, like to all you guys out there who don't like, like, oh, what's my purpose? What's my, pur- I feel <laughs> used. I feel like I'm, I feel like I don't have any direction in my life. I'm like, he's like, wait a minute. Like, like if you're a bee in a beehive, your job is to make honey, right? Go get the freaking pollen from the flower, bring it back do your part, like be a work, like it's okay to be a worker bee, like do something that is useful. And like to tie it back into what I was just saying is like, think of yourself as an app, like think of yourself because you are like, you're on, you're on an Instagram at which everybody's on or TikTok, whatever app you're using. But like, why is your brand like that worker bee? Like what, what job is it fulfilling? You, you get, you get my point. Um, and it's not an easy question to ask. I only since just really recently isn't. figured mine really out. Isn't. I feel like it's really, really hard to, to think about it. Um, but and I hope people figure for themselves, you know, like we could give all the information out, but like, this is one of those things where you either know it off the bat or you have to learn from your mistakes and realize that, um, what your purpose is, you know, even as a creator and it could take time. You, and again, some people know it right away. So Right. Uh, I guess that's what the podcast is for, just kind of giving our insight and a little nugget for people to like listen to and see if they could relate to it and maybe they can 
take from it, you know? I can't wait to listen um, back to this just because, I mean, yeah. I think I think we covered a lot. And, I mean, yeah, the- I, I, you know, I, 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 like we covered about like, um, what was it? Like, uh, I think we were talking about like community a lot uh, or like what our year's been like and how our passions are not what they thought to be and what our true intentions are and what our goals are creating for yourself and mental health and traveling like we really sure. covered we really covered a lot here this is this yeah, is i remember what we, yeah <laughs> like for sure then the, some advice uh create for you uh be useful uh be like an app what kind of app are you what app are you you know yeah what app are you it's Ooh. a pretty uh, section what app are you you know that's a, that's a good one you should talk about that's a pretty good uh title to thank talk you about, you know um usefulness influencing you know the purpose i i really it's liked the the opposite of the fomo thing too that we were saying is like is like you know you can travel but being like you know don't try to, to, to just escape you know what you know it's a good example too uh again you know how people like advertise a bunch of apps oh you gotta get this app you gotta get this app you know and a lot of times people will get certain apps it looks cool it looks like it, it's got millions of downloads but a lot of times people don't even end up using it you know, it's right. in your phone, you know, you're, you're subscribed to it, you're following it, but you never use it. Mm. But I guess what your, your audience is basically are the ones who are actually using the app and getting feedback, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. It's a great uh, analogy. It's just, it's almost the same thing, you know? Thank you. Downloading the app and those are your followers. All the downloads are your followers. Right. And the guys who are actually using it and reviewing it are the guys you're paying attention to. Right. Oh, that's rockets. Right, right. And and I and I think also yeah. don't put your app behind a paywall. In other words, like give away the sauce that whatever sauce you have, like like give it for free. Cause because I think there's you know, there's there's so many like there's people out there that don't share their knowledge because they just don't care yeah. to. They just don't care to. And I think that's fine, right? That's fine if that's your reasoning. If you're busy, right? Like I know there's guys in uh in the industry like who I even look up to, who, who, who just, they never have, I've never seen them make a tutorial video and I'm not sitting here being like, oh, that guy's a gatekeeper. It's like, no, I just think they just don't care. Like, I, I don't, I think if I asked them how to do something, they would, they would just tell me they wouldn't care. But then I know that there is people where it's like, hey, you know, I'm making you sign up for um, a session with me which is different, you know, that's, that actually is different because then that's their time. You're paying for their time, which yeah. I think is completely fair. But they don't put the content out there for free. They don't put anything out there for free. And I think that um, it's the same vibe as if you download an app that's free and then all of a sudden it's like you got to subscribe to use it. And that's how all yeah. these freaking apps are now and it's annoying. That's crazy, man. And hey, if the app is that fucking amazing, it's so useful, you'll have guys who'll pay for it. Right. That's crazy. It's but it's like the same thing. Like the the, the funnel closes, you know? Have a have the free version That's of the so app. Cool, man. Have the that free was version so good of what you brought up. Thank you. I, I like it. Thank th- have the free version of the app. This is the takeaway. Have the free version of the app. Still be good. Like, don't think that you need people to like Cause that's, that's the end goal for my, for everything too. And, and dude, I had a lot of people hit me up just from that one reel being like, where's the classes? How can I pay? Like, I'll pay you blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, this is exactly my intention with this. Like I'm going to have editing sessions with people. But, um, the, the, the point is, is like the free version is still demo good. Version. Demo version has that's to be sweet. <laughs> the demo version has got to be sweet. Yeah, no, of course. They got to do the full version, you know? Oh, the full the version's going to be great. The over. <laughs> the, full, the full version is going to be really good. I'm excited. Or like the beta version of the app, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, sick, man. Uh, yeah. I think I think we can call it there if you're if you're sad. I'm pretty yeah, satisfied. Yeah, cool. I kind of like said what I wanted to say. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, again, um, dude, thank you for this. It's good. Thank uh, you it, for it gave this. me like a self-reflection of what happened last year and the year before and right now cool and dude i i really gotta i really gotta push it i'm still like working on it like struggling a little bit but uh but again little by little okay well, well dude let me know if you ever want to just like bounce ideas around and, and talk and stuff yeah uh, we I'm could done, do that man. not not recording it too or recording yeah. again <laughs> or recording again fuck it you know yeah uh, an episode how uh, Sky recovering from his one year of creative rut. You know, I'll make a video about that. By the way, yeah, I thought I, you should. I, I wrote it in my scripts. You should. It's been a year. It's been a year, bro. So it's been a year. Definitely. Uh, 
But I I don't hate that it was a year. I think it really reflected everything. What was more important to me? So right, like everything, creative, mental health, finances, goals, uh, big goals, small goals, and personal you know personal growth. Yeah, a lot of stuff, dude. A lot. Sweet. Yeah, man. Cool, man. All right, well, all right. You, is there anything you want to plug? You want to you want to plug? All right, Sky Kim, what's your what's your at? Uh, oh, my handle, it's at underscore sky dot Kim underscore. But you can just do sky dot Kim. I should be the first one. Sky up, so. Kim, everybody. Sick. Absolutely sick. Thank you again for hopping on here. Do more with less. We will talk to you guys soon. Tune in for the next episode. I don't know who it'll be with, but let's keep these rolling. Peace, Later, everybody. Guys, good luck. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.